Good day and salutations coming to you from Pine Tree High School. Your host, OK here, and I'll be telling you a folk Christmas story, recorded and read to you by myself, and it will add to the Pine Tree High School Bluebeard Radio Christmas Blockbuster. I hope you enjoy it. The day after Christmas a number of years ago, I was driving down a country road in Texas, and it was a bitter cold, cold morning, and walking ahead of me on the gravel road was a little barefooted boy with nondescript ragged overalls and a makeshift sleeve sweater tied around his little ears. I stopped and picked him up. Looked like he was about 12 years old and his little feet were blue with the cold. He was carrying an orange, and he got in and he had the brightest blue eyes one ever saw, and he turned a bright smile on my face and said, I'm going down the road about two miles to my cousin's. I want to show him my orange old Santa Claus brought me. But I wasn't going to mention Christmas to him because I figured he came from a family, the kind that don't have Christmas. But he brought it up himself. He said, Did old Santa Claus come to see you, mister? And I said, Yes. We had a real nice Christmas at our house, and I hope you had the same. He paused for a moment looked at me, and with all the sincerity in the world said, Mister, we had the wonderfulest Christmas in the new United States down to our place. Lordy was the first one we ever had there. See, we never do have them out there much. Don't notice when Christmas time comes. We heard about it, but never did have one cause, well, you know, it's just Papa says that old Santa Claus, Papa hurrahs a lot and said old Santa Claus was scared to bring his reindeer down into our section of the country because, because folks down there are so hard up, they liable to catch one of his reindeer and butcher him for meat. But just several days before Christmas, a lady come out from town and she told all the families through there, our family too, that they was. Old Santa Claus was coming to town to leave some things for us, and if Papa'd go into town, he could get some Christmas time for all of us. And Papa hooked up the mule and wagon, and he went into town. But he told us children, Now, don't y'all get all worked up and excited, because there might not be nothing to this yarn that lady told. And, but shuck, she hadn't got out of sight up the lane there, till we was a done a watching for him to come back. We couldn't get our minds off of nothing else, you know? And Mama, she'd come to the door once in a while and say, Now y'all quit that looking up the lane because Papa told you there might not be nothing. And, but long about the middle of the afternoon, well, we heard of the team of jangling harness a-coming, and we ran on the front yard, and Ernie, my little brother, called out and said, Yonder comes Papa. And here came them mules just a big trot, you know, and Papa standing up right in the bed of that wagon holding two big old chickens, all the feathers plucked off, and he was just a-yelling, Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! And the team stopped right in front of the gate. And all of us children just went a swarming out there like a flock of chee-chees, you know? And just crawling over that wagon and looking in. And mister, I wish you could have seen what was in that wagon. It's bag of stuff, stripey candy and apples and oranges and sacks of flour and some real coffee, you know? And just all tensely and pretty and we couldn't say nothing. Just kind of held our breath and looked at it, you know? And Papa standing there just waving them two chickens a-yelling, Merry Christmas to you! Merry Christmas to you! And a laughing, that big old grin on his face. And Mama, she come a hurrying out with the baby in arms, you know? And when she looked in that wagon, she just stopped. And then Papa, he dropped them two chickens and reached and caught the baby out of her arms, you know? And held him up and said, Merry Christmas to you too, Santy Claus. And baby little old Alvy Lee, he just laughed like he knowed it was Christmas too, you know? And Mama, she started telling us all the name of them nuts. They wasn't just peanuts, they was... She had names for all of them. She, Mama knows a heap of things like that. She'd seen that stuff before, you know? And it was all of us, just a chattering and going on at the same time, us youngins are looking in there, and all of a sudden we heard Papa call out, Merry Christmas to you, Sam Jackson. And we stopped and looked, and here comes Sam Jackson leading that old crippled-legged mule of his up the lane. And Papa said, Sam Jackson, did you get into town to get some Christmas time this year? Sam Jackson, you know, he sharecrops over there across the creek from our place. And he shook his head and said, Well, no, sir, mister. Well, I didn't go into town. I heard about it, but I didn't know it was for colored folks, too. I thought it was just for you white families. All of a sudden, none of us were saying nothing. Papa, he looked at Mama, and Mama looked up at him, and they didn't say nothing. Like they don't a heap of times. But they know what the other one's thinking. They're like that, you know? And all of a sudden, Papa, he broke out a big grin and he said, Dad, blame it, Sam. It's a sure good thing you come by here. Lord have mercy, I'd like to forgot. Old Santa Claus would have me in court if you heard about this. The last thing he asked me if I lived out here near you. Said he hadn't seen you around and he said he wanted me to bring you part of this out here to you and your family. Your woman and your children. Well, sir, Sam Jackson, he broke out a big grin. Papa said, I'll tell you what to do. You get your wife and your children and you come down here tomorrow morning. It's going to be a Christmas time all day long. Come early and stay late. Sam Jackson said, You reckon? And Mama said to him, Yes. 
and you tell your wife to be sure and bring some pots and pans because we're going to have a heap of cooking to do, and I ain't sure I've got enough to take care of all of it. Well, sir, old Sam Jackson, he started off a leading that mule up the lane in a full trot, you know, and he was a heading home to get the word to his folks and his children, you know, and the next morning it just... You remember how it was yesterday morning, just rosy red and looking like Christmas time? It was cold, but you didn't notice the cold, you know? When the sun just come up, just all rosy red and us youngins were all out of bed before daylight seemed like. Just running in the kitchen and smelling and looking, and it was all there, sure enough. And here comes Sam Jackson, his team, and his wife, and his five youngins in there. And they's all looking over the edge, and we run out and yelled, Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! And Papa said, Christmas gift to you, Sam Jackson. Y'all come on in. And they come in, and Mama and Sister Jackson, they got in the kitchen, and they started cooking things up. And us youngins started playing Christmas time. And it's a lot of fun, you know? We'd play Christmas gift with one another and run around and around the house and just roll in the dirt, you know? And then we started playing go up to the kitchen door and smell. And we run up and smell inside the kitchen door where Mama and Sister Jackson were cooking at. And then we'd just die laughing and roll in the dirt, you know? And go chasing around and playing Christmas gift. And we played Christmas time till we just wore ourselves out. And Papa and Sam Jackson, they put up a table and put some sheets over it and some boards up over some sawhorses and everyone had a place even the baby and mama and sister jackson said well now it's ready time to come on in we're gonna have christmas dinner and i'd sit right next to willie jackson you know and he'd just roll his eyes at me and i'd roll mine back at him and we'd just die laughing you know and there was an apple and an orange and some stripy candy at everybody's place and that was just dessert see that wasn't the real christmas dinner mama and them had done cooked that up and they just had it spread up and down the table and so papa and sam jackson they've been sitting on the front porch and they come in Papa, he sat at the end of the table, Sam Jackson sat at the other, and it was just a beautiful table like you had never seen, and I didn't know nothing could look that good and smell that good, you know, and Sam Jackson, you know, he's real black, and he had on a white clean shirt, and then them overalls, everything had been washed and was real clean. Papa said, Brother Jackson, I believe you're a deacon in the church. I ain't much of a church man myself, but I believe you're a deacon. Maybe you'd be willing to give grace. Well, Sam Jackson, he stood up there and his hands is real big. And he kind of held on to the side of the table, you know. But he didn't bow his head like a heap of folks do when they're saying the blessing. He just looked up and smiled. And he said, Lord, I hope you're having as nice a Christmas up there with your angels as we're having down here. Because it sure is Christmas time down here. And I just wanted to say Merry Christmas to you, Lord. Like I say, mister, I believe that was the wonderfulest Christmas in the new United States of America. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed the Falk story, and I hope you have a wonderful holiday. Good day and salutations coming to you from Pine Tree High School. Your host, OK, here, and I'll be telling you a Falk Christmas story. Recorded and